<coughs> sorry so so far what we have seen that we were trying to find the position of a third charge where if you keep it then it should remain at equilibrium okay so what happens if we have a situation in which the charges kept at the end let's say if i call it q1 and if i call it q2 and uh, separation is let's say d now these are free charges let's say even q1 q2 are free charges so yeah, as in they are not fixed to their position so yeah yeah they are not fixed at their position but we would like to keep it uh, at a separation d itself <coughs> so if you look at uh, any one of the charge it will experience the repulsion force in this direction and uh, this is the unbalanced force because the repulsion will push it uh, towards left uh, and we have to somehow balance it so the only way this can be done is if you keep some negative charge somewhere here right so if i keep yes. some negative charge then there is a possibility that it may attract and uh, balance it out okay but we do not know how far it is and at the same time we also don't know what is the like uh, magnitude of this charge so what is the value of uh, q similarly if you do the same analysis on the right charge it will also have the repulsion force on the right side <clears throat> and therefore to balance we must have some negative charge which is already there so <clears throat> the idea is that uh, in what minus q like what is the value of this value what is the q value we must keep it here so that not only this charge in fact this and this charge all should be at rest so to understand this uh, question what we do is we will assume that let's say the q1 q2 are fixed charge then the third charge position we can find easily right because that does not depend on the the value of q which you bring it here so yes. no matter no matter what is the charge here if it is at rest then it is true for any other charge so that's why it is easy to find the x value in the very beginning we have done this already right so we can say yes. okay. so <clears throat> how we start with we will say for equilibrium for equilibrium of third charge the net force on this must be zero so this will be attracted by both the charges on the left and right and so we can say k q1 q <coughs> upon x square must be equal to k q2 q upon d minus x whole square <coughs> k and q will cancel out as usual and d minus x by x will be under root of q2 by q1 right so this is the value of uh, uh, this is how we can find the x value so this becomes so 1 plus under root of q2 by q1 and uh, now we are ready with the value of x so x turns out to be d upon under root of u2 by q okay so let's say if this is the value this is the x value that we have so we are like free from the the calculation part that uh, what is the value of uh, uh, x And now this answer is known to us so now we can focus on the finding the q value so what is the value of charge itself and to get this answer <clears throat> you can either balance this charge or this charge both will give you the same answer you can pick one of them 
You can pick one of them. Yeah, Q1. So for equilibrium of Q1, because Q1 is also free, so uh, it should be at rest, and you can say this is the repulsion equals to the <coughs> attraction. And we can understand the repulsion will occur between the charges itself, Q1, Q2. So K, Q1, Q2 by R square, which is D square. And the attraction here is uh, K, Q1, Q by X square, right? Is this clear? Yes, sir. So what we are getting here is that Q turns out to be the value of Q is <coughs> Q2 multiplied by X by D whole square. Okay? And uh, if you look carefully, X is nothing but, uh, in fact, X by D is how much? Root Q1 upon root Q1 plus root Q2, isn't it? Yes. So if you substitute the value, we get Q2, <coughs> Q1 upon root Q1 plus root Q2 whole square. And this is a really nice answer that the third charge will be product of charge upon and this formula, whatever it is. Is this clear? Yes, sir. So probably we can further simplify that one. And uh, what we can write is E1 Q2 upon so we can write as one by Q plus two. And we can also write as uh, root Q1, root Q2, whole square, because this is the way of we connect. So one by Q terms are to be, you can take the square, uh, and this will become uh, one by root Q1, one by root Q2, whole square. Can we write like this? Yes, sir. And if you take the root both sides, this root looks really nice, I mean, uh, numerically. It is like a parallel combination of registers, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. And this is pretty easy to remember. Eh? I can you can remember the first one also, but this is the way to you can remember that one by root q is one by root q one by one by root q. So that's easy to remember that what is the value of third charge. Eh? Okay, sir. So <clears throat> let's solve one numerical. So here we have taken both. Both the positive charge, so let's say this is plus 9q and this is plus 4q. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, we would like to know, and these are also free charges, so these charges are not fixed, these are free charges. And uh, if D is the separation, <clears throat> so we know the third charge must be somewhere here, and uh, it should be negative only because they are repelling each other. So finding the position is pretty easy, and we know the answer. Now the X is how much? If you remember, sir, so X by D. Uh, yeah. Sir, it will be root Q1 divided by root Q1 plus root Q2. We have to substitute. Yeah. That. Yeah. So you can just remember this. See, I mean, how to remember this? The X is close to Q1 and uh, Q2 is on the other side of X. Right? So or the, the better way of remember is like, uh, you can remember this way. Oh. Yeah. The better way to remember is, So X is close to which charge? X is close to? 
Yes. So, the answer is Q1 by, and this is always the closed charge, like which is close to X. You can say 9 Q. I think uh, we can remove the Q part because Q is common. We we'll get cancel out. So ro root 9 upon root 9 plus root 4, which is 3 by 5. Hmm? Yes. Sir. Am I right? Yes. Sir. <clears throat> X turns out to be uh, 3D by 5. That's easy, no? Okay. Or, or in case if you forget, we just solve it. You can write as 9 by X square equals to 4 by D minus X whole square. You can solve this solution. KQ by X square by equals to like you are equating forces. So this will eventually turn out to be this. So D minus X by X is 2 by 3. So D by X equals to 5 by 3. X by D equals to 3 by 5. So no matter how you remember, uh, it's good to solve it. Uh, no need to remember any formula. It is always easy. So don't try to I mean, push yourself to mug up the formula. This is pretty easy calculation. No need to go through all this. Method. Just solve it. So once you get the x value, <coughs> or uh, I mean this value, the value of q is how much? So q is simple. It's a product of charge. So it's a q1, q2 by root q1 plus root q2, whole square, right? Yes, sir. <coughs> and uh, we can write this uh, 36. Q square upon uh, uh, 3 plus 2 pi. Just check this out. This is 36 Q by 25. Is this correct? Right? Uh. So under root of 9 Q is 3 root 2 yes, sir. plus 2. Two, which is a five root two whole square is twenty five q. Yes, sir. So this is the answer. So the third charge must have this value, must be negatively charged, and uh, must be located at a three d by five. So these are the the and uh, like uh, answers that uh, you need to mention. I mean, you need to solve for. <coughs> Is this clear? Yes. Now, what happens if we have a situation in which the two charges are of uh, opposite sign? So let's say if we have a charge uh, uh, plus 9q and minus 4q, and this is d again. The moment the answer is negative, we know the, the point of equilibrium will be beyond the line, I mean, uh, beyond the charge, right? Either left or right. Yes. Sir. We also remember that this must be close to the the weaker charge. Yes, sir. So near the poor, right? So the answer must be somewhere here. <clears throat> okay. So the point of equilibrium is uh, known to us in advance. Now, if you draw the FBD of any one of them, so this will feel the attraction by the other charge, right? Attraction. And to feel the attraction on the right side, right? Yes, sir. And uh, now to balance it out, what we expect? We must have a charm in mean, some force like this. And this is the force due to the short charge. Now, which kind of charge I should keep here to attract? to attract positive charge, sir. Correct. Okay. So it means we have to use some plus two charge here. So now the first step should be finding the X value. So what is this uh, distance? 
and you can do it by the basic just uh, at the net force uh, zero for this uh, imaginary charge particle is possible <coughs> so to get the x you have to balance the net force <coughs> on the third charge but once you have the third charge you can go back to these charges any one of them and uh, by equating the net force to zero you can get the value of q as well. so can you try this question okay sir Uh, so, yeah. Sir, I'm getting the answer is 36Q. So. so, that should be the right answer. And what is the X value? 2D. So, 2D, sir. So. Yeah. So, that's so, X is 2D, and then by writing the, yeah. So, you should get Q to 36 Q. Yeah. So, you can solve any question like this, right? <coughs> So these were the these are the question of uh, <coughs> equilibrium in uh, in one dimension like when we have two charges. So let's take some question of uh, SHM. You now SHM is a chapter which I haven't taught you, but I will tell you what exactly is SHM. <coughs> so SHM is a chapter called simple harmonic motion. And uh, what we do in this chapter is we try to find the uh, the time period of uh, small oscillation. That when you uh, display something from its equilibrium, and if it starts oscillating, then <clears throat> if the disturbance is really small, then what kind of uh, oscillation it will uh, perform, and what will be the time period of uh, oscillation? Okay. So the whole idea is uh, finding the oscillation time period. And uh, there is a very standard method of doing this. So the rule says that if you can find acceleration by using the net force upon mass, and if you realize that uh, acceleration is proportional to displacement from the mean position, like equilibrium position, so let's say you move uh, a small value x from the mean position and accession is supposed to be parameter proportional to this. At the same time, if you are displacing towards the right, it is trying to go left and vice versa. So when such a relation comes into picture, uh, we call this is SHM condition. It's a mathematical condition. <coughs> and uh, we can equate by a symbol omega square x. Omega, we call it uh, natural, I mean, angular frequencies, so omega is called angular frequency.
so omega is called angular frequency and uh, time period is called 2 pi by omega okay <clears throat> so the time period the, the way of finding time period let's say i mean i let me give some let's say you get a equals to minus a by m into x so what you're supposed to do is equate this with uh, or compare this with this formula and whatever you can see omega square will become k by m so omega becomes under root k by m and so you're supposed to have time period of 2 pi by omega which will turn out to be m by k so you're not supposed to think much the whole idea of solving a system is can you find the mean position can you displace <coughs> Can you find the net restoring force? And then you have to just write like this, this particular thing. So I'll show you one example. And uh, <clears throat> uh, this is not so difficult. So imagine this uh, situation. So what we have is, So let's say m is the mass. Uh, right now it is in the natural length. So definitely, definitely the net force is zero. So this is the mean position, the equilibrium position. Nothing is happening. So this is like equilibrium position. Now what you do is next is you displace a bit. So imagine you're displacing by a value x, which is really small, but it doesn't matter. So you displace by value x, okay. Now, moment to displace the spring will pull it back, right? Yes, sir. So the accessing develop will be left. Yes, sir. So you're displacing the right axis is left with their opposite. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so what is the like uh, accessing magnitude? So you can say axis equals to minus kx, the net force upon mass, right? Yes, sir. And once you write like this, what you have to compare by this formula, that's it, which okay. have, we have done here. Okay, sir. And once you compare, you will get the omega. And once you get the omega, you can write like this. That's pretty simple. Uh, so there are three, four steps to solve any question of a system. And the steps are very easy. So let me tell you how to think from scratch. <laughs> Yes. How do we like, ex uh, sir, I don't understand like how this A is equal to minus omega square X was derived, so. Mm, because I haven't taught you that simple one. So this is uh, something, uh, uh, imagine this way, like uh, uh, oscillation is a uh, one kind of motion, like one certain, I mean, there is certain motion which we call oscillation. So oscillation is when something moves to and fro, right? Yes, sir. And uh, there's something called periodic motion in which when you complete the one, uh, like, you know, when you repeat your motion at equal interval, so we call periodic. So in okay. physics, we have periodic motion and we have uh, oscillatory motion. So we have two motions which are well defined. Now, <clears throat> it is not necessary that every periodic motion will be oscillatory. Also, it is not necessary that every oscillatory will be, I mean, every periodic will be oscillatory. So periodic may or may not be oscillatory and oscillatory may or may not be periodic. So there is no relation between these two. But there are some motion in uh, nature which are oscillatory as well as periodic. <laughs> so in uh, language of physics is the motion which are oscillatory as well as periodic we call it harmonic motion, okay? What oh. we call harmonic motion, okay? So this is harmonic motion, but SHM is a, a mathematical condition. Like those harmonic motion, which are simple mathematically, simple means 
the simple mathematical relationship is called proportional relationship right a straight line equation yes sir so mathematically mathematically linear equations are simple equations right yes so when you write y equals to mx plus c this is called linear equation and this linear equation uh the y and the x will be proportional okay the y and x will be proportional so y and x are proportional <clears throat> so the linear equation the physical significance is a proportionality that's the meaning of linear equation yes sir. so any proportional relation is called simple so in physics when it comes to the simple harmonic motion like motion which is harmonic but mathematically simple so how we can bring this mathematical simplicity so we say that in any motion if the acceleration develop is proportional to displacement and opposite to in direction whenever this happens we call this is shr so, so we call it shr understand yes. so now when you remove when you remove the proportionality you have to put some constant okay some constant so this constant c uh, looks really nice if you write like this so i am taking c as omega square because eventually this turns out to be a very nice mathematical relation so how it will be so to show you or to demonstrate I, let me show you <coughs> so we can write a equals to v dv by dx so v dv is how much now what is the property of oscillation so if you know the I mean international oscillation everything which will oscillate will go to from mean to extreme we have done this in the work in the power if you remember yes sir so oscillation will occur from the mean to extreme at extreme what is the velocity zero, zero sir so at any position x velocity will have some value v isn't it yes so if i say if x is a can we say v is zero yes sir so when x is x can we say this has some v yes sir this a is called amplitude of oscillation this a is called amplitude of oscillation is this clear yes sir and so if you integrate we get v square by 2 minus 0 equals to minus omega square x square minus a square by 2 lucky two will cancel out and what we will get is <coughs> v square equals to omega square a square minus x square so what is v finally omega under root <coughs> like this. now one more step Can we write v equals to dx by dt? Yes, sir. So can we write like a dx upon under root of a square minus x square is omega dt? Uh, yes. And if you integrate, when time is zero, let's say x is uh, having some value x naught, and when time is t, uh, you are having value x some random value. So. This is a very famous integration of sine inverse x y. So you might not be knowing this, but this is a very famous equation. Inverse. How you can uh, you can get this answer? Easy. So to integrate, let me show the integration separately. So. <clears throat> how to integrate this function we have done this maybe in the here by substitution yeah uh, so we can substitute a equals to a sin theta 
yes it become really it become really nice function so it will become dx by d theta is how much a cos theta yes sir so dx we can replace by a cos theta d theta yes sir if we substitute we can add a cos theta d theta upon under root of a square minus a square sin square theta a cos theta d theta upon <coughs> and this is exactly a cos theta if you simplify Yes, everything done. so the, in, this is simple d theta integration and answer is theta that's it but if you look from here sin theta is x by x this implies theta is sin inverse x by y right so this is the answer is okay. so this integration is really it's really famous integration yes sir. so now <clears throat> now coming back to this uh, part so this will become sin inverse Now inverse functions are angle, right? Yes, sir. Inverse functions are angle, isn't it? Yes. What is the meaning of inverse? Inverse means angle, na? No? Theta is what? Angle. This is angle, na? No? Sorry. Mm -hmm. This is angle. So angle we represent like inverse function. Do you know this? No. So in in uh, uh, inverse. Sir, I'm learning ITF now, sir. In maths. Okay, 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 fine. So this will be like last topic, maybe uh, the end of integration chapter. Okay. So what it sir, says that? Yeah. Sir, it's like the start of calculus for us now. It is. It is the end of calculus. Oh. Okay, sir. So once your calculus will end, then you will come to know these things. Yes, but don't worry so uh, inverse functions are basically angle so when you say sin inverse cos inverse tan inverse what you say is angle only okay so yes, keep sir. in mind this will be helpful be helpful to you so these are angles and therefore <clears throat> uh, this is called initial angle and there is a very standard notation in physics we call it phi this is the angle as a time function Okay, so this is the angle. Uh, this is the in general angle. So this is the theta. So the way of writing is theta minus phi equals to omega t. So theta is how much? Omega t plus phi. This is how we write. Okay, but theta we can write as. So let me write on the next page. Integration. So if you go to the next page, so what you can see here, so so you can write like okay, let me write once again. So sine inverse x by a. Minus sine inverse uh, initial value by a equals to omega t, and uh, <coughs> we can write this as some symbol phi, and this is omega t. So sine inverse x by a is omega t plus phi. So x by a will be how much? Sine of omega t plus phi. So x is how much? <coughs> a sine. Omega t plus phi. So this is how we get the formula, which means any any particle which is oscillating and performing simple harmonic motion, the instantaneous position of the particle we write by this relation, which is sinusoidal. And because sine is a periodic function, so we can say the x is also periodic in nature. Okay. And uh, the phi is what sine inverse x not by. A. So basically, x not is nothing but a sine phi. So anyway, we'll uh, relearn all those things in uh, chapter of uh, simple harmonic motion. But a brief idea of oscillation is good for you so that you can do uh, SHM problem as well. Okay. <coughs> now the tips to solve SHM. Now you know what is omega. Right? Omega is uh, chosen 
intentionally because it turns out to be a really uh, nice, meaningful uh, constant. So this becomes angular frequency. Omega is called angular frequency. And what is the meaning of this is, imagine uh, you can ignore SHM, you can think as a circular motion. So if you remember circular motion, uh, earlier we used to have the angular velocity, right? Yes, sir. So earlier we have studied about the angular velocity, right? So yes. every, every SHM you can uh, imagine as a circular motion, uniform circular motion in which the X is the vertical line. <coughs> the horizontal line is called reference line. And uh, let's say if you start moving from this location, this is called X now. And at any instant, if you're here, this is called X. Um, okay. This is yes, the position at t equals to, this is the position at t equals to zero. Now, what is the meaning of angle? So what you do is you draw a line from the point to the circle and then join to the center. This angle is called five. <coughs> this is called omega t, that angle you travel in time to. And this whole angle is called theta. That's the meaning of this. It's the physical meaning of, I mean, geometrically, this is what you need to understand. It is clear? What is yes. phi, what is omega t, what is? So you're, because you're moving with omega, angle of velocity, you can think like this. So let's say you're hypothetically moving with omega. So in time t, how much you will, Travel omega t angle wise. Okay. Yes, sir. And the radius is nothing but the amplitude. We can call A as the radius. So, in case of oscillation, this is called amplitude. This is the radius. It's like a radius. Okay. So, this is the yes. way to interpret uh, circular, I mean, uh, all, uh, SHM. On a circular scale, so when you interpret SHM on a circular scale, then uh, <coughs> it is really easy. And why it is easy, let me tell you. So you can find X from the triangle itself. So what is X? Can you see that X? A, X, theta. So what is X? A mm. sin theta. Yes, sir. And if you look carefully, the theta is nothing but the omega t plus y. Correct? Yes. The theta is full angle. Theta is from here to here. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so, yes. Yes. So this is uh, all about SHM and why? Okay, why this equation is interesting because uh, just a moment. So imagine if a party is performing SHM and the position to be right as a sine omega. I'm ignoring the five for the sake of uh, calculation. So velocity will be how much? Dx by dt. And if you differentiate, yes. what is it? A omega cos omega. Yes, sir. If you differentiate one more time, this is called acceleration. And this will be minus A omega square sine omega. So the acceleration is how much? Minus omega square A sine omega t. But A sine omega t is x. So you can see yes. A is. Okay, 
So it's a one way or the other way we can uh, arrive at the same answer. So the whole idea is the assumption is very technical assumption. It leads to something a nice uh, representation of the equation. Okay. So what you are supposed to remember is that if you can derive a formula for acceleration proportional to x, then whatever is the coefficient is the omega square. Only the value, not the set. Okay. Yes, sir. And this is <clears throat> angular frequency. So time period we define is two pi by omega. The other way of thinking is in one time period you make one complete circle. That's it. Yes, sir. Because theta is omega t. So how much time it will take to make one oscillation? So when you travel two pi angle, right? Yes, sir. That's why the answer is 2 pi omega. It is clear, no? Yes. So you got the brief idea of SHM chapter also. So this is like a, you have studied almost 1% of SHM is over. So rest 99% will study in um, the given chapter itself. So now why this, chapter, why this concept is important? So imagine a situation. So we have two fixed charges. So we have two fixed charges. And D is the separation. So if both charges are equal, where the third charge we should keep to keep it at, uh, at equilibrium? At the center? Yes, sir. So let's say the third charge is at the center and so it is at rest. Because the net force will be zero. Okay. Yes. So the <clears throat> the midpoint, the midpoint we can call as the midpoint we can call as mean position. Mean means the position where the net force is zero. It means uh, if you calculate the net force. You will find the answer as zero. So this is called mean position. And the same thing earlier we used to say as equilibrium position. So name will change. Now, why the word mean is better than equilibrium? Because generally when I say equilibrium, we think of a rest, right? Yes, sir. But mean mean does not mean rest. Mean means a position where the force is zero, but the motion may occur. Okay. So we are no, we are not uh, like uh, confining the body at that location. We are saying that if you pass through that location, you will feel nothing. That's the idea. Understood. Yes. <clears throat> so, what happens if I displace slightly on the right by x one? So if you try to go right, then repulsion will increase from the right charge. Yes, sir. But it decreases from the left charge, right? So F2 will act left and F1 will act right like this. Now tell me which force is bigger, F2 or F1, or are they equal? Sir, F1 is greater, sir. F1 is greater, I will show. Sorry, F2, F2 is greater, sir. Yeah. So <clears throat> what is the net force? F2 minus F1, right? Yes, sir. Now, how to write the force using Coulomb's law? K QQ by D by 2 minus X whole square. Is this clear? Yes, sir. <clears throat> now, we have to simplify this under the assumption X is very, very. So we can use approximation relation. <laughs> so 
a plus b whole square minus a minus b whole square is equal to how much? A plus b into a minus b. So, so this is basically four a b four a b two d x. Yes, sir. And the denominator you can see will be d square by four minus x square whole square. Yes, sir. In the numerator, x is multiplied. In the denominator, x is added. When you add something which is really small compared to the other number, we should ignore the smaller. So this we can ignore, and we can write as k q q two d x upon b square by four whole square. That's it. Do you realize this? Yes, sir. This is called approximation. So in SHM, the whole idea is you can always use the concept of approximation. And any term which is either added or subtracted, if it is really x is really small, then we can ignore it. Where it is multiplied, we cannot ignore it. Where it is divided, we cannot ignore it. We only ignore it in addition or subtraction. Okay. So oh. what is left? What is left eventually? So force uh, net force turns out to be k q q so Sir, are you speaking something? No, no, I'm just writing. You can see that the next person we got as a proportional to x, right? Yes, sir. So this is the this is the restoring force. It is, it is trying to bring back, right? Yes, sir. So you can see that you are trying to displace right, but the axis and develop is left. Okay. So we can write a equals to minus f net by m. And the F net is how much? So we can write as eight Q Q by option of M D Q. And what is the next step? Compare with the formula. So what you get omega is equal to. Time period is so this turns out to be the answer. So what you should do here is you simply, uh, if you have understood, you can see it once again. Okay. Yes, clear. Yes, sir. This is clear. Can I do it once again without looking at it? Okay, sir. So question is uh, once again, if you don't remember. Sir, Q is like moved by a small distance X. Yeah, yeah. So it That's is at a mean position. It is at a mean position. You displace slightly, find the net force, and then find the accession and compare. That's the only steps. Okay, sir. Yeah. So try this out just for practice. Yes, sir.
Sir Danza. Very good. So same answer. Sir, I'm, uh, one second, can I just compare it? So? Sir, yes, the same answer. Yeah. So now you have also mastered this uh, system. So you can do more problems now. Mm -hmm. So imagine, what if the charge I change the sign negative? This is the mean position. Because the net force is zero, attraction. Now, if I displace towards right, what will happen? Will it remain, uh, will it go left or right or remain there? So if I move a bit towards the right from the mean, what will happen? So it will tend to go towards the right, right. side. So it means it will not oscillate, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So if it is not going to oscillate, then what you can do? So we can do something different. So what we are going to do in this case is, instead of moving right or left, what if we move up from center? If this charge is brought it here. Let's say I move from center to upward, like right angle. So then the net charge will be downwards if we move upward. Yeah. I mean, the net the, force. Yeah, so oscillation is possible? Yes, sir. So before you find the oscillation, can you find the net force? OK, sir. Sir, in terms of? Y and D, Q okay. and Q. So find net force first. Okay, on Wednesday, do you have lectures? Sir, yes, sir, I have a max lecture, sir. Okay, okay. on Thursday, uh, we have lecture, no? Yes, sir. Okay. So on Thursday, uh, I may take a late uh, in the night lecture because uh, of some reason, okay. so I, I'm not in Mumbai, so I'll be going somewhere. So hopefully okay. I will take, but uh, in any case, if something goes wrong, I will inform you in, uh, before, okay? Okay, sir. Yes. Sir. But we compensate in this week. Uh, we'll take we'll keep on some other days for sure. Okay, sir. So how fast uh, this chapter is going on in your school? Because I think they must have finished the uh, further letter part also, right? Sir, they have completed. Uh, we were solving uh, Gauss theorem last class. Sir. Oh my God, so that's too far for me. So what I'm I'm doing is the laws, I mean, uh, Coulomb's law. Yes, sir. So electrostatics in JEE advance is really vast. Like uh, it is 10 times bigger than Bohr's. Almost. Yes, sir. So you will end up writing roughly 130 pages. So that will be roughly like 200 to 300 slides. Okay, sir. Don't, don't worry, that's easy. Because we will be solving a lot of numericals. That's the reason. Yes, so we'll be like going more in depth into the concept mm -hmm. and the variety of questions. So. Yes, yes, a lot, a lot. Okay, sir. So you got the next first? You can Stay assume some theta yes. angle, you can assume some theta angle and then write, right? Yes, sir. So it's, it's good idea to take this as theta and later on you can substitute. Uh -huh. So net force is 2 sir? cos theta. Yes. Sir, I'm yeah, getting yeah. two 
k q q y divided by d square by 4 plus y square whole part 3 by 2 sir. but why will also come back something like yes sir i said y sir yeah yeah that's correct now you can see something interesting if y is zero force is zero yes sir if y is infinitely large, if y is infinity, then answer is again zero. Yes, sir. So if something is zero, so I can say if I plot the graph between the f net versus y, so it begins with zero, and at infinity it is also zero. So somewhere it will become maximum, and will decay to zero. So somewhere the force become maximum because you start from zero, you end to zero. So there must be some y at which the force must be maximum, right? Yes, sir. Can you find that y value? For so what value of y the force is maximum? Find y such that f net is maximum. Um, so, yes, yeah, yeah, I'm just yes, sir. sir. I'm getting a pretty complicated answer, sir. Uh, how much, sir? I'm getting three plus or minus under root of nine minus 16 d square by eight. So, what you did to get the answer? What is the maximum? Value? How to get maximum? Uh, sir, I just uh, differentiated it equated to zero and yeah so when you differentiate all, when you differentiate all this term will be zero no and this is a constant and no no yes, it doesn't matter so you can think as a function let's say a function of y equals to y upon so this is like u y v rule right so yes sir f dash y will be v u dash minus u v dash upon v square right? yes sir so v square we don't have to calculate 
Yeah, so if you equal to zero, this will give, give you v u dash equal to u v dash. That's yes, sir. So that's easy, no? So uh, okay. So, yeah. so instantly we get a very nice answer. Oh. So what we we'll get is uh, the v is uh, d square by four plus uh, y square power k by two. V u dash, which is one, because if we differentiate y, it is one because y into three by two, one by two into you have to use the chain rule, two y. Yes, sir. This, this is what you missed, huh? no? Yes, sir. So now you can see this is nice. This is three y square into d square by 4 plus y square power 1 by 2. And what is here? Uh, d square by 4 plus y square into d square by 4 plus y square 1 by 2. So this will cancel out. So d square by 4 plus y square is basically 3y square. So 2y square is d square by 4. So y square is d square by 8. So y is can say plus minus two rupees. That's nice. So this is the answer. D by two rupees is answer. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, so this is the like uh, uh, the force is maximum. So beyond that value, it will decrease, and before which will also uh, less. So this is D by two. Okay. Yes, sir. So for a small displacement, if Y is so find also find. Time period of oscillation of charge Q if Y is very small compared to D. So this is the SHM part. So let's say we are not uh, uh, taking it far away, very close to the center only, slightly up. So you can see easily it will oscillate, right? Up and down, up and down. Yes, sir. What is interesting is that no matter what is the value of y, it is going to oscillate. But all oscillations are not SHM because all oscillations are not simple. Like the relationship is not simple. But if you make the y very small compared to d, the equation becomes simple equation, and so it is SHM. Okay. okay. Yes. Yes. So do it.
sir? Yeah. Sir, I'm getting the value as pi under root of uh, d cube pi epsilon naught by q q, sir. Okay, let me just confirm. So uh, we got the net force, right? Net force we got as 2k q q y upon d square by 4 plus y square power 3 by 2, right? Yes, sir. But if y tends to 0, I mean very small, then we can ignore this term compared to the first term, right? Yes, sir. So I hope this is what you did. Yes, sir. The acceleration will be minus 4 q q by pi epsilon naught m d two mass will come. Right, this is what you did, right? I hope. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, so omega becomes under root of. Yeah, so then I'd like this. So we see your answer, right? Yes, sir. Very good. So now we are not just solving the force uh, question, can also solve the uh, SHM uh, problems. So the next question will be. So motion under the action of uh, mutual attraction or repulsion force. So let's say <clears throat> we have two charged particles. And both have the same mass. So the force of repulsion at any instant will be KQQ by x square, where x is the separation. And uh, mass is same, so we can say the acceleration will be also be same, right? Yes, sir. So this will be equals to, uh, the force is this much, uh, okay. So both will accelerate with same acceleration. Because they have same mass. Now, if I change the mass value, let's say I'm making a general question. So, will they experience a same force or different force? They'll be experiencing different force. Oh. Different force? No, sir. Same force. Since there is one electrostatic. Force, so force, is the, force is the like this. So they will experience the same force, but uh, the axis will be different. So A1 will have axis in F by M1, but A2 will have axis A by M1. Okay. Oh, yes, they, will move, they will move opposite direction, right? Yes, sir. So what will be the relative axis? A relative will be. A on yes, sir. Correct. Correct. So then I guess 
f1 by m1 plus 1 by m2. Now, if you remember, this is nothing but the reduced mass. Yes, sir. So there's a back formula that reduced, I um, mean, sorry, the relative acceptance current is reduced mass into A relative. So the, the formula which we used to write earlier, F equals to MA, will be replaced by F equals to mu A relative in case of two mass system. And uh, uh, this is what we write, and this is, so whenever you want to find the relative axis, you can just write a by mu. That's it. mu is the reduced mass. Okay. So this is one motion there that you should know. Now the other motion is interesting. So in the previous question, uh, what we saw that uh, they are moving away from each other. So the separation is a variable quantity, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I would like to uh, think of a situation when separation is constant. So let's call case two. Case one, the separation is variable. So now case two is when separation is is constant. So this is called a binary charge problem in gravitation this is called bariatric center of two stars so let's say we have two charge particles q1 and q2 but they are oppositely charged particles then only this is possible so same charge cannot be at fixed separation that is for sure but if we have two charge in which one is negative or other is positive. So what they will do is they will attract each other, right? Yes, sir. Now the force of attraction can be balanced easily. You know how? How, sir? By creating centrifugal force. Yes, sir. And that can also be achieved only by imparting velocity at the right angle to the line joining the charge, right? Yes, sir. So if I give some velocity v1 and if I give some velocity v2, they may maintain the separation and what will happen is both will move about their common center of mass. Because center of mass will never move. No? Center of mass is like a fixed point. Why? Because the forces are internal. Yes. So internal force cannot move the center of mass as we know. Okay. Yes, sir. So in the center mass frame, both will perform circular motion. But with a different radius. So Q1 will move in a circle like this. Um, sir? Just a moment. Okay. So the V one and V two. are uh, velocity imparted but they will have because the separation is maintained so the turning of the charge particle must be 
on the same line right so okay the circle of the uh, q2 will be bigger circle right like this yes sir so no matter uh, where they are uh, so no matter where they are at any instant they will be always on this line okay sir so the velocity will be always same numerical value the like speed is same not the velocity but they will turn by same value all the time which means the angular velocity omega will be same for both of them that's the whole idea okay yes sir now for two charged particle if the separation is d we know how to find the center of mass okay so if i call this distance as r1 and this r2 so r1 we know is uh, we know m1 r1 equals to m2 r2 yes sir okay so here r1 by r2 is m2 by m1 so we know this answer like r2 is m2 d by m1 plus m2 from central mass concept and we can add r2 as m1 d by m1 plus m2 okay okay so now what we are supposed to do is to find the omega like how much velocity we can we can find the velocity easily because v1 will be omega r1 and v2 will be omega r2 because omega is same so it is a good idea to find the omega one right omega itself yes so this is a this is a simple question of circular motion so we can write a net force towards center equals to m ac and you can apply this formula for any one charge it doesn't matter which charge you choose so then the force of attraction will behave as centripetal force you can write k p1 q2 by d square and let's write for i'm writing for m1 so m1 omega square r1 right yes sir and if you look carefully R one itself is m two d by m one plus m two, and if you look carefully, this is exactly same formula. I mean, I can tell you the similar relation. You can remember it's a mu omega square d reduced yes. mass again, again. Yes. So this formula is similar to the formula like f equals to mu ac i mean a relative or you can say omega square d so the answer is pretty simple the mass will be replaced by uh, omega uh, sorry uh, reduced mass and then the formula is simple so even in case if you forget all the derivation if you if you remember this much you can accelerate the speed to solve the problem it is good idea to solve separately okay yes sir so f equals to mu omega square d Okay, let me write down the formula. K Q one Q two by d square equals to mu omega square d. So pretty complex. My God, too much. Very small thing. So this is the am I right? Yeah. 
uh, what I'm writing is this happens when you bring too much content at one place. So the time period, so uh, to make one circular motion, one rotation, uh, it will take. So they may ask you the, like, uh, the relation which you should remember is that omega is inversely proportional to, or you can say omega square is inversely proportional to one by d cube. So this relation will help you in solving some of the problem. Okay, sir. And later on, you will come to know that this is exactly what Kepler said. The Kepler's third law, this is the Kepler's third law, basically. Yes, because sir. this is as good as writing t square is proportional to d cube. Yes, sir. So in, even in case if you forget everything, the Kepler law is the, the rescuer. It will rescue from all the calculations. So this is a really big problem, but uh, this single problem will have multiple layers and knowing everything is, uh, it will it is a very enriching in terms of learning. So it will give you a lot of insight how to think about it. Okay. okay. So was this like the derivation for Kepler's law, sir? Yeah, yeah. Kepler's law we can derive uh, using the conservation of angular momentum later on in the chapter of uh, gravitation. Don't worry. So, no, but the charges derive. weren't taken into account. We did the same uh, thing except with gravitation force. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, the the only difference is yeah. There we use the gravitational pull as the the cause behind everything. Here we talk about the uh, electrostatic Coulomb force. Okay, okay sir. Yes. So. Let's say if they mention that okay, uh, consider gravitational force as well, then we have to add both the forces, which is uh, pretty cumbersome. No need to do so, but this that could be a situation. I mean, this problem. So J may uh, ask you to consider the the gravitational pull as uh, as well. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, so now we can do the, some more problem. You can see how many questions we are solving. So we are touching almost all chapter of physics, isn't it? Yes, sir. Rotation, center mass, circular motion, what not, loss of motion. Oh my God, too much. Okay, so I can give you some problem from like this. This problem, solve this problem. So we have an equilateral triangle. And we have a charge here, Q, Q, side is A. So we know that all three charges will repel each other, correct? Yes, sir. So the net force of a repulsion on any charge will be along the, this line, right? Yes, sir. So we can say that this is a repulsion for each form I mean, each charge. And technically all will have same value. So I would like to keep them at their separation. And to do so, we do a small trick. So what we do is we bring a charge, let's say minus uh, Q here. And this will attract, attract and attract all three. Because the minus Q itself is the same at the centroid. So net force on the minus Q will be zero. Yes, sir. Because that is symmetrical. But uh, the force of attraction by the minus Q uh, may balance the repulsion and even the other charge can also be at rest. So the question is, find Q such that the system remains at a rest. So everything should be at rest. So what we should do, do here? So we have to find the value of Q, that's it. First question. Okay, sir. Okay. So this is an easy one, you can do it. Yes, sir.
So I'm getting the Q value as uh, Q by root three. So. That's correct answer. So I think Q is Q by root three. So it is of course minus. Uh, so the value of Q should be this value and the sign is minus. Okay. Now, what happens if uh, you exceed the value? So all charge will try to go towards the center? Yes, sir. So in this case, to maintain the separation, what will you do? You will create the centrifugal force. Yes, sir. So what we will do is you will impart velocity to each particle. And you know how the velocity will be imparted? It's very simple. Like this. Because the attraction we have to nullify. So we know that this force is a repulsion. And you can do it for any one charge. So this is a repulsion. And uh, this minus charge is plus charge. And we know this will attract. Yes, sir. Uh, and we know that attraction is more than repulsion. So if I impart some velocity at a right angle to each part, so not on this, this will be like this. Because when we do so, we maintain the symmetricity. Yes, when we impart Then this will create extra because attraction is more than repulsion so we it's to get mv square by r r is the response because this is the center mass so this force will add up and will balance the if repulsion plus mv square by r now can balance the attraction because i as i said the attraction has increased now right yes sir so the question is, uh, what is the value value of uh, V? So the answer is simple, mv square by R is F A minus F R, and you can substitute the formula. Uh, okay. so, so the attraction is how much? Q Q capital Q by R square. But the repulsion is root three, a two star by a star, right? Yes. And the rest you know how to do. So you can substitute the value of r and you can get the uh, v value. Okay, so you can find v uh, something. So you can do it. Let us simplify yes. and get the v first. Substitute r and get v also. Okay, sir. So you can just come back in a minute, sir. Yeah.
answer? Yes. Sir, I'm getting under root of root three k q capital Q minus k q square by m. Yeah, so root three. Oh, one second. K root two. Like this. Yes, sir. Minus k q square by m. By m. Sir, like the entire thing by m, sir. Like this. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So you can take something common and it will look nice. You can take KQ uh, uh, by sir, M and M. also the Q is the small Q square. Sir. Yeah, I was thinking about this thing. Yes. So that is, you can take KQ by M common, right? Yes, sir. Like this. Yeah, fine. I think that's the right answer. So you can you come across questions like this very often. So uh, instead of three charges, I can make it four charges. And yes. you also come across a very similar question, gravitation. So what they'll do is mass, mass, mass. Mass will only attract. So they will go like this, like this, like this. And to balance it, we have to apply the velocity like this, like this. So once you know one question, you can solve the other one. Okay, sir. That's not very difficult. So we are covering two chapters without saying. And that is that the gravitation is actually covered in electrostatics itself, uh, most part of it. Okay, sir. So I will give you a, a sheet of gravitation, uh, like a notes, and uh, most of it you can understand just by reading yourself. So gravitation, we are, I'm going to cover this way only, and only some part which is not in uh, covered in this chapter is the Kepler's law. So that I will cover separately. So I will cover the Kepler's law and satellites uh, as a separate topic. The rest is similar to uh, electrostatics. So I will share the notes for the same. Okay, sir. Okay, so we have seen so many varieties. So what next? Rotation, center mass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we can do something like a, a basic question of uh, uh, okay. so just a minute. Let me take some some break. Two minute break. Okay. Okay, have we done the question of a hexagon problem like net force on one charge? Yes, sir. Alternative? Oh. Okay. Sir, so now you can... just like gave a hexagon with alternate positive and negative charges and yeah, told yeah. me to find the net force on one of the charges. And, and, and this question? The Q problem? Yes, sir. Yeah, so we have done this. No? That's good. So now the question is. Uh, Equilibrium in two dimension. What does it mean? Uh, so now we have a ceiling. We take two silk threads which are insulator. These silk threads are attached to a very lightweight pit walls. And if you remember, I have about pit walls. So pit yes, walls are basically. What are pit walls? Is styrofoam, styrofoam, uh, 
कोटेड विथ मेटालिक पेंट ओके सो स्टारो फॉर्म कोटेड विथ मेटालिक पेंट so let's say uh, you give some charge let's say i'm giving uh, identical charge like same charge and they have same mass as well so they will deflect each other because of the repulsion assuming that uh, uh, they are like charge both of us so repulsion will take them away from each other and at some point if you hold and release it will be at rest so because of symmetricity both angle will be same and uh, the force they will experience is the repulsion and the repulsion is called the coulombic force fc we represent and the other force will be gravitational force and because this is a symmetrical diagram so you can analyze one of them but need not to uh, need not to uh, take care of both the charges just take one of them and apart from these two forces we have the tension there in the state so can you tell me if i change the charge from q to q dash let's say if i make the charge q here q dash here and if i keep the mass same the symmetricity will be disturb or remain same sir the coulombic force won't be disturbed so yeah, so, so both will have the same coulomb force right yes sir and both will have same gravity mass mass will also be same yes sir so it means the symmetricity will be preserved yes sir now what happens if i change the mass so if the mass is disturbed means the t they are, uh, they, are not, they are not symmetrical they are not symmetrical yes sir so what will happen in that case if they are not symmetrical sir then the equilibrium will not be at like the same angle sir correct but equilibrium will be there not at same angle So can you tell yeah. me uh, which angle will be bigger and which will be smaller? If let's say if I say uh, m and m dash, and if I say m is more than m dash, which angle you are thinking is bigger, the left or the right? Sir, I think That's the right, right will be bigger, sir. Correct. So the lighter mass will have bigger angle. Yes, sir. And for the obvious reason, if it is really heavy, it will not go far away from the mean position. Yes, so sir. the lighter will go very away i mean far away and the heavy will be almost close to the vertical line so the symmetricity depends on mass not on the charge okay yes sir so what you can say here as a note symmetricity depends on mass not on charge okay yes sir no okay. so Sir, are you speaking something, sir? No. Okay. So now to solve the question, it's very simple. We have two forces, Coulomb force 
But the problem is to know the Coulomb first, we need to know the separation. Let's call it X. So Coulomb first will be how much? K Q square by X square. Yes, sir. And X is how much? You can see it's 12 centimeter. So it is a good practice to convert everything into angle. So the yes. Coulomb force, Coulomb force you can see will be equal to K Q square by 4 L square sine square theta. That's simple. So this is the answer from the Coulomb's law using Coulomb's law. Now what about the using equilibrium? So if you think of equilibrium, uh, that's pretty easy. So these two forces are uh, creating the resultant like this. And if this is theta, this is also theta. Yes, sir. Tan theta we can directly write from the concept of equilibrium equals how much? Tan theta is Fc by Mg. Yes, sir. Or you can write like T cos theta is Mg, T sin theta is Fc and so on. So it's the same. So Coulomb force can be derived in two ways. One using the equilibrium and other using the Coulomb's law. In fact, Coulomb was not aware of this uh, inverse square relation. So what he was trying to do is, he was trying to calculate the force in two ways. Okay. And then he plotted the graph and he found that, okay, this is following the inverse square law. So he came to know about the inverse square law by using this formula only. Okay. And how this was, I mean, used uh, to form the inverse square law by taking the angle really small. So he took the small angle value, say one millimeter, two millimeter, three millimeter was the separation. And L was really large, so L was like one meter. So if you suspend something one meter long, and if it will go away by one millimeter or two meter or three millimeter, or even by one centimeter or two centimeter, it looks like really small, isn't it? Yes, sir. So for a small angle, the tan theta we can relate with X directly, right? That's the idea. Okay, sir. How? So, okay, I tan, can tell you. So, tan, X is, uh, tan theta tan will tend to theta, uh, sir. Yeah, yeah. So for a small angle, tan theta is the same as angle theta? Yes, right? sir. So it is like an arc of a circle. So, okay, we'll take the case later on. So now first step is, can we equate this to get the relation? So we can have mg tan theta must be equal to kq square upon 4 l square sin square theta, right? So q square is how much? I mean, just a relation. So, hmm. okay, can I this? So this is the relation. Now this relation is, uh, I mean, of course you can derive from the two equation and there's no need to remember any of this. Just go back to the I diagram, mean, write the equilibrium, write the Coulomb's law and then get the answer. Now, what is very interesting here, the case when theta is really small, what uh, uh, Coulomb did as a experiment. So if uh, theta tends to zero, if it is really small, So the, the thread is really big, really big. And this was the actual uh, demonstration by the Coulomb. So he used this concept. So he wanted to have some uh, linear uh, relationship. 
and we can see that this is two theta, right? If you remember. Yes, sir. But this is like a arc of a circle, as good as this. So you can write as theta equals to l by r. Yes, sir. And the l becomes like a radius. So what you can realize that for a small angle, theta we can write as x by two l. Okay. And yes. and you can you can also understand and uh, you can also understand that uh, the Coulomb force is mg tan theta and uh, the tan theta we can write as theta only, right? Yes, sir. This is as good as writing mg x by two l. Okay. So this is the force versus x relation. That's pretty simple. And also the force using Coulomb's law. What can I? Because now we know Coulomb's law. What can I? One by four pi. Absolutely not. U square by x square. Right. This is how we can I? Yes. Sir. And if you compare these two, you will get the uh, x relation. This is something which is independent of theta. Only depends on x. So q square upon uh, like from one and two, q square by four pi absolute not. So you can see q square is how much? Uh, hmm. So this is the the relation that we, I mean, you need to know, and uh, okay. So this is a very famous question of uh, from I E Irodo. Okay. So Q square is uh, uh, some constant uh, into x cube. I'm just in order to avoid writing so much. Where c equals to two pi absolute not m g by l. Okay, so the charge is how much? Uh, let's take it c square so that it looks nice. Then charge is how much? C x power three by two, right? Yes. Now you can see that the charge is uh, proportional to third power of uh, the separation. The third power, no, three by two, the half power, like one and a half power of separation. So. What is the? I mean, Irodov problem. Irodov says that imagine the same situation. Imagine the same situation. And. Uh, Okay, and both are positive charged particles. So what happens? Like generally, we assume like uh, air is a insulator, right? Yes, sir. But in nature, because of the lightning process and thunderstorm, although it's a close to insulator, but it will have a very small conductivity, which we can not see or feel it. So the air is not perfectly insulated. It is somewhat conductor, um, very, very bad conductor, the so poorest conductor. So maybe because of some atmospheric event, let's say the atmosphere attains some sort of conductivity, although very poor, but it attains. So what will happen? The charge on the pith ball will start uh, leaking from the pith ball to the atmosphere. In a way, it will go to, from the pith ball to atmosphere actually. This is called leakage or charge leakage phenomenon. 
so it is a very famous uh, in phenomena charge leakage pump phenomena which happens due to the the sudden gain of the atmospheric conductivity and why we have the atmospheric conductivity you can think like uh, uh, we have a, a moist air okay moisture is too much in uh, in atmosphere and there is a thunder storm or uh, there is a lightning it will become slightly conductive and some charge will leak out so what happened let's say the charge from the fifth wall starts leaking to the atmosphere as a result charge will decrease right yes sir and as charge will decrease the repulsion will also decrease correct sir doesn't it like when when you say like the charge leaves it means the electrons but here we are considering the positive charge yeah so both charge will leave from the fifth wall to the atmosphere it's like you you will just uh, i mean it will vanish imagine the charge vanish in thin air oh so it's if it's conducting means uh it will try to lessen the charge on the pit wall sir yeah correct 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 it is like it will uh, it will like touch and remove now oh. air can also touch no? air can touch yes. so, so now if it's positively charged the electrons will move into the pit wall yeah exactly so what will happen is it will lose the net charge and so the repulsion will decrease yes sir and as a result of a repulsion less than i mean decrease of repulsion they will come closer okay okay sir because the x is very small so they will move they they will move in a such a way it looks like a straight line motion coming towards each other right yes sir So it means there is a velocity of approach. Yes. So question is, if d q by d t is the leakage, so if you differentiate, this will become three by two root x d x by d t. Okay, differentiation of the equation. so this is called the rate of charge leakage so rate of charge so for leakage i have to make it negative so if i put minus minus this is called rate of charge leakage and you can see that uh, this is as good as writing 3 by 2 c root x minus dx root t now minus means this is negative physical velocity of approach so the rate at which separation will diminish between the two charged particles for velocity of approach so if i give you this as some value k uh, or some other value let's say whatever you can name it so dq by dt is 3 by 2 e root x into so what erodov has done is erodov has given this value and asking this value that's it. so this is the question number let me tell you the question number just a so Okay, let me give you the question. So you can read the question number three point three. Okay, sir.
just read this question rest it's easy So we just replace uh, velocity, uh, velocity of approach by a by root x and we get the answer. So correct, correct, correct. So that's a uh, you know what to do is next, right? Yes, sir. So now what you are capable of doing, like after this discussion, uh, what I expect you to do. So I expect you to do question from SC Verma. Okay, so sir. I, I hope you have the book SC Verma. Yes, sir. And there's a chapter called Electric Field and Potential. Yes, sir. So you're supposed to solve a question. Uh, in between, you may get some uh, potential question which you can ignore, but you can solve up to question number. Thirty four, one to thirty four. Uh, just. Yeah, 34. one to thirty-four or thirty-two at thirty-two. No, thirty-two, thirty-three also correct. Thirty-two, thirty-three. Yeah, one to thirty-three. That's your homework. Okay. So we have covered. We have covered this much. We have solved many questions in, in between. Yes. This is your homework till the next lecture. So hopefully we will meet you on Thursday. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is also the last page of uh, Zoom notes. I can only add one more page, which I want. I'm tired actually. So we'll see you in the next lecture. Okay. Bye and take care. Yes, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Sir, and